Well, that being said, you better clear next week, too, then. And ask Raymond in the design department to email me the blueprints of the factory. Okay? Can I just have the keys? When I know I'm on the flight. No, no, no. No, no, I'm gonna make it. <laughs> no, I'm just talking to my kid. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it. Dad, this is bold. Doug, we just uh, have him forward me the steel specs then, okay? Hi, can you tell me what time Flight 52 arrives? 11.15 a.m. Tokyo time. Any bags to check? No, just carry on, okay? They were already boarding, you'll have to hurry. Okay. I hope they'll be all right. Come on, Dad, you can worry just as easily on the plane as in here. Let's go. I don't care whose birthday it is or how hard it was to get the tickets. The SATs are next week, and you are locked inside until then. But it's okay for me to be your driver? Don't be a smartass. You wanted the car, so you're dropping me off. Yeah, whatever. It's not whatever. We had a deal, and you have to live up to your end of the bargain. It's not a deal. You want me to go to college, and that's that. Yeah. I want you to have options. All right, I gotta go. I'll call you when I land, see if you need any help. Yeah, you mean you'll check up on me. <laughs> Come on, get on the that's plane. That's the way you want to look at it. Hey, you getting something? This is the final morning call for Pacific Mobile's Flight 52 to Tokyo. Passengers must proceed immediately to gate 24. Electronic checklist, check and complete. Hydraulic panel, set. Weather radar, operational. Stormfront's brewing 1,500 miles out. Okay. David, call Sharon. Let's get this show on the road here. Bet. Hey, Sharon, we all set back there? Just one more straggler coming through the gate, and then we're good to go. <laughs> I know, it's always in my section. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Can I see your boarding pass? Yes. You're right up these stairs. Good morning, folks. This is Captain Williams speaking. Welcome aboard Pacific Global Airlines. Non-stop service to Tokyo. We'll be getting underway in just a couple of minutes. Take your seats. Relax. I'll be there before you know. Made it. Can I take your jacket? Oh, yes. Thank you. Keep you looking fresh for when we land? A little late for that. What do you need to drink? Yes. But I better have a coffee because I got work to do. Okay. Maybe later. Okay, Dex? Daddy has to go now, buddy. Yeah, that's right. Time to fly the plane. Okay. I love you too, pal. Bye bye. Sorry, it's. Well, that's okay. Daddy? Hey, guys. Hey, everything okay back there? Yep. Anything else I should know? Yeah, we're carrying a couple of golden retrievers uh, down below. And a Mr. Stein in 7B has permission to look in on them mid-flight. No problem. Are you done with this, Steve? Yeah, thanks, Sheriff. Okay, guys, let's get going here. Ground control. Pacific Global 52 ready for pushback from gate 6. Roger, Pacific Global 52. You are clear for takeoff. Yeah, well, he didn't just leave you alone. He left me, too. Excuse me. We're about ready to take off. You're gonna have to shut that off now. Hey, Mom, I gotta go. The phone cop says I have to hang up now. What's the difference? It's all the same. Exactly. So you, Mom, won't mind switching. Please. All right. Hmm. Sorry, but you're gonna have to take your seats now. Okay. Okay, folks, please turn off your yes. cellular phones and electronic devices. They're no longer permitted this time. Appreciate it. Okay, that's going off now. I was looking at the proofs of the menu. You know, if there's a problem with the layout, we're not gonna have time to you. Can you relax for one second, please? It's all in the control, all right? No, no, it's not, okay? We open in three weeks, and there's always the, you know, the if factor. You know, what, if uh, we lose our maitre d', if the coolers don't arrive. If you don't shut up. Where did the flight attendant go? I just wanna confirm we have the conference room. Flight crew, please take your seats to prepare for takeoff. You sure you're from the same gene pool? He was swimming in the shallow end. What? Tower, this is Pacific Global 5-2, ready for takeoff. Roger, Pacific Global 52, you're clear for takeoff. 
Gear up. Roger. Gear coming up. Flaps up. Flaps up. Engage jaw damper. Yaw damper engaged. Oakland Center, this is San Francisco Tower, handing off Pacific Global Flight 52. Flight 52, you are leaving track on airspace, entering Oakland Center airspace. Please make contact with Oakland Center at 132.05. Have yourselves a good flight. Oakland Center, this is Pacific Global 52, climbing to a flight level of 65,000 feet. Estimated cruising speed, 930 knots. Roger, 52, radar contact. You are clear to flight level 650 via flight planned route to Tokyo. lid on this the men in this room and the pilots in the air that's it admiral commander the pilots are standing by waiting the commencement of the missile test very well is this the projected range of the missile 500 miles sir if the phoenix missile is successful it will double the range of any air-to-air -air missile in production that's an awfully wide berth yes sir but we're gonna need it when the target drone drops from the C-130, it'll climb to an elevation of 65,000 feet and establish a circular pattern. The F-18 will be moving at Mach 1 when it targets the drone. The missile will be moving and accelerating at better than one mile per second by the time it hits the target drone. It's a lot of elements at play, sir. Now, with the lack of a warhead, will it affect the missile's accuracy? No, sir. We've replaced the warhead with a titanium replication. Targeting will remain exact. Commander? The C-130 is reporting rough weather moving in. We've got a storm hovering out there all day. Should we consider postponing? It's just another variable for the missile, Admiral. Storm's been upgraded to tropical. You know, we're going to be up above the weather, but it's going to kick up a headwind that's going to slow us down. Change course? Well, you want to sit over here one of these days, what would you do? 90 minutes out of SFO and ahead of schedule it won't affect our arrival time. That's it? And uh, I would save on fuel and make for a much smoother ride for the passengers. I'd do it. Well, geez, maybe I can retire. Make this flying computer to you, too. Hang out with the grandkids, play a little golf. Yeah, well, let's just hope you don't play golf with the grandkids, because the world can't afford to have that slice here as past. Yeah, you're very funny. <laughs> very amusing. It's a funny guy here, huh? <laughs> Oakland Pacific Global 52 requests permission to deviate for weather. Roger, Pacific Global 52, deviate as needed. That'll take us close to intersection Hawes. Yeah, it's a military operation zone. So. Want me to plot an alternate course? No, they'll stay on their side of the line and we'll stay on ours. Okay, commencing turn. Well, that looks like fun. What? Oh. <laughs> yeah, just trying to keep up. <laughs> I know the feeling. Our cruising altitude of 65,000 feet and a speed just below the sound barrier. At this time, you're free to move about the cabin or you can just sit back and enjoy the ride. I think about changing the name of the restaurant. Oh, yeah, so was I. So, how about Mickey's Mind? Our menu changes by the minute. Oh, very funny. Contact the C-130, launch target. Navy 559, this is home plate. Roger, home plate, this is Navy 559 in position. Launch target. It's done. 
dog. Leave a message at the beep. Listen, I'm sorry I snapped at you. When I get home, we'll sit down, we'll talk man to man about the whole college thing, okay? All right? All right, I love you. Where are you? Study. Bye. Okay, the oysters will be harvested in Massachusetts at 6 a.m. and then touch down in Tokyo in time for dinner. Beautiful. That's if they make their connection and if we can maintain a supply, if nothing slows us down. Rachel, some cocktails? Yeah, tell them to leave the cart. What? What, what did I say? Amazing. <sighs> Drone is transmitting and is accelerating to Mach 2. Contact Navy 347 and confirm. Navy 347, this is home plate. Do you have target acquisition? Permit of home plate. 347 is preliminary target acquisition. Mr. Stein? Excuse me, are you the head stewardess? Flight attendant, Dad. <laughs> I've been called worse. <laughs> I've been instructed to take you below. That sounds ominous. <laughs> Maybe you should take a couple of those. Chill out. I'm chilled. Mm -hmm. Just enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At least Carter and Kennedy will be happy to see me. Well, we should get moving. It says here every two hours, and it's been almost three. They're fine. They've got each other to keep them company. You're right. They're fine. I know they're fine. Oh, this way. Oh, sorry. They'll be fine once we land. I'll take care of it. <laughs> oh, is there another restroom? There's one in the back of this section. Right in here. Carl, hand me my binoculars. That. Probably some military jock doing some high altitude maneuvers or something. We did deviate pretty far south. Close to the military zone, but we're still outside its perimeter. No lost visual. What do you think? Well, it's pretty far off our starboard. Carl, make your way back to the galley window. See if you can spot it. And go easy back there. We don't want to alarm anybody. Closer, we'll turn. I'm gonna get the folks back in their seats. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the captain speaking. We may uh, encounter a little turbulence, uh, so I'm gonna put the seatbelt sign back on and ask that you return to your seats and buckle up. Thanks. Why would anybody wear that and you know who she's dating? Oh, I know. Navy 347, confirm. Good target resolution. A flight, Navy 347, has target a good resolution. Distance is 480 miles, over. Foxtrot Alpha Whiskey, fire at will. Navy 347, this is home plate. Foxtrot Alpha Whiskey, fire at will. deal I made with the girls if I took the transfer then the uh, entire family would move to Tokyo for the year right guys hmm? Hmm? where are we going where are we going hmm? Sharon here hey we're getting people back to their seats now we'll be right up I 
Navy 347, this is home plate. Confirm, only one target drone dropped. Home plate, I read two targets. military target drone.
Sir, something is strange here. The drone target signal is still active, but the missile is no longer transmitting. Navy 347, this is home plate. We are receiving conflicting signals. Our monitors verify missile impact. However, target drone is still transmitting. Do you copy? Confirm missile impact. Tracking target drone and vertical fall since impact. It is descending at a rate of... 12,000 feet per minute. The missile may have just grazed the drone. Without a warhead, it would take a full face hit to destroy it. But 12,000 feet per minute is too slow. Well, the impact may have distorted the drone's shape, increasing the drag, slowing its descent. Home plate, this is Navy 347. Vertical scan indicates the target's descent rate has decreased. 10,000 feet per minute. Target leveling out at 11,000 feet. 347, proceed toward target immediately. Roger, home plate. I'm 460 miles out. ETA is 16 minutes. There's only one explanation for a recovery from a rapid descent like that. I'm aware of that, Admiral. Where's Tack? Tack? Tack is broken! Home plate, Navy 347 has visual contact. We hit a commercial airliner. Confirm last transmission. Confirm contact with a commercial transport. There's a three foot hole on its starboard side and a six foot one in the port fuselage. Are we operating outside our hot zone? I don't know, sir. It's close. Is it possible the missile locked onto something outside the zone? It's possible, sir, if they were close enough to the perimeter and had a big enough heat signature. What would be flying that high? 347, can you identify aircraft? Home plate, it's a Pacific Global Stratton. It's a new SST, they're running out of San Francisco. Why weren't we told about this? We were, sir. They must be flying outside their normal corridor. 347, are there any signs of life on board? No apparent movement in the cabin or the cockpit. I'm less than 30 feet away. 347, drop back to a safe distance and monitor from there. That aircraft is unstable. Copy? Roger, home plate.
Oh, my God. Compression, all right? They're all unconscious. Now let me try and get us some help. I need to find a crew member. Wait, wait. I, I think I saw a, a crew member going in an elevator. Where? There. Mayday on either international emergency channel. Maybe their radio's down. Anyone who survived the impact would have been subjected to complete decompression, sir. There's less than 1% oxygen in subspace, and no one is surviving on that. How do you account for the planes leveling off? Maybe in the chaos, someone had the sense to re-engage the autopilot. Matos reported them slumped over the console, sir. So you're assuming everyone is dead? It's an unfortunate probability, sir, but yes. I believe they're all dead. Pacific Global, Flight 52, do you copy? Are you a pilot? Twin engines, nothing like this. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is Pacific Global, Flight 52, do you copy? Carson? Yeah, Jack. You got 52 to Tokyo? Uh, hang on. Yeah. They're overdue with their position report. Yeah, you're right, no update since Haas. You want me to send a request? Give him till 14.30. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Hey, this is Pacific Global, Flight 52. Do you read me?
Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is Pacific Global 552. Do you read me? Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is Pacific Global 552. Does anyone copy? Chen! Chen, I need your help in here. What about me? Stay with the co-pilot. If he wakes up and starts talking at all, come and get one of us. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is I, I can't do that. I'm not even supposed to be here. I mean, my dad was supposed to visit me, and then my mom said that I had to go to Japan and see him. And I, it's all just this big mistake. You're right. You're right. But we can't change that. Right now, we have to look after each other, okay? You can do this. What if he dies? He won't die. You just stay with him, keep him company. His name is David. I'll be back to check on you in a bit. You'll be fine. Yet. Does anyone copy? Nothing. If we were transmitting, someone would have responded by now. You know this cockpit? Anything more familiar in here? You're the pilot. My Skymaster is all dials and gates. This is a glass cockpit. All the instrumentation is here. I just don't know where. And we need to make contact with someone who does. That's our first priority. Okay. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is Pacific Global Flight 52. Anyone copy? There's been nothing broadcast on any frequency. Keep on it. Yes, sir. Nothing, sir. It won't be long before Open Center realizes that they've lost contact with the Stratton. We have containment for now. I'm proposing we classify the aircraft as a derelict ship and act upon it accordingly. Scuttling an abandoned trawler is a long way from downing a commercial airliner. Perhaps, sir, but these are the facts as we know them right now. There's no physiological way that anybody would have survived explosive decompression. That aircraft is on autopilot, and it will, if left unabated, eventually fly back over land, run out of fuel, and then drop to the ground. We've already made one mistake today. I would caution against acting too hastily. I believe not acting would be our second mistake, sir. If the hull of that aircraft were ever found, the facts would make themselves known. Valentine, get me the oceanic depth charts for the area. Yes, sir. Want it work? No power. Oh. Well, mine works. We're 1,500 miles from the closest cell tower. We'd have to be just off the coast to get an interception. What about the radio? It's not transmitting. We probably lost the connection with the antenna. So, we're alone up here? For now. Listen, if there was anybody out there, they would have heard us by now. I I'm the pessimist in the family, right? And I know we are going to be okay. Hey, listen, listen. You hear? We're still flying. That's because they're all dead, Mickey. And so are we. Pacific Global, this is Oakland Center. Flight 52's position report is overdue. Are you in contact with them? We'll look into it. Jack, Oakland Center lost contact with 52. Try the data link. Find out what's going on. Hey, Sharon? Give me an idea what that is. It's a data link. Why did I think of that? What? Flight 52, what is your status? It's, it's Pacific Global. In San Francisco? No, no, there's a terminal in the dispatch office. We can text message back and forth. Woo! Are you kidding me? <laughs> Tell them what's going on. Tell them what's going on. Emergency Mayday. 
Aircraft damage. Radio dead. Mid Pacific. Need help. Flight 52, explain nature of emergency. Nature assistance, amount of fuel, present position. Okay, tell them pilot dead. Co-pilot unconscious, navigator lost. Tell them I am uh, a weekend pilot. Two holes in cab, suspect bomb, complete decompression, three passengers, one flight attendant survived, others dead or comatose, need help. That's an understatement. Yeah, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson? Yeah, we got a plane in distress, flight 52 to Tokyo. Distress. How bad is it? Explosive decompression. Flight crew dead. We made contact with the flight attendant, the weekend pilot. They and two others were in positive pressure areas during decompression. Was it a bomb? Could well be. We're gathering as much information as we can. Can this uh, pilot handle a strat? I don't know. I'm going to try taking it through a turn. Well, if you think you can handle it, then do it. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Right. Okay, people, listen up. I need detailed charts of Flight 52's last known position, fuel estimates, and contingency plans. On the top. Let's go. Nichols, what is their current position? They're about to fly over the Nelson Abyssal. It's over two miles deep. It's been 55 minutes since the Phoenix struck the Stratton. There's been no change in course or speed. Our course of action seems very clear. If she remains aloft, we risk further loss of life, not to mention the damage that this incident could inflict upon the Navy and upon our country. Washington authorized this test because we don't want to fight even. We want to fight ahead. And as unfortunate as this situation may be, if it surfaces, it could cost us that advantage, sir. I may not agree with your assessment of the situation, but this is your command. Given what we know, I won't stand in your way. Understood, sir. Get me Navy 347. Navy 347, stand by. Home plate, this is Navy 347. Standing by. Navy 347, this is home plate. You are to render the autopilot on the Stratton inoperable. Confirm. Confirm, Navy 347. Roger, home plate. Navy 347 proceeding with mission profile. Commencing approach. Jack, based on their current location and fuel report, if you're gonna turn them back, you have to do it right now. Let's see what our weekend pilot can do. Can you identify and use autopilot heading up? Tell them yes. Can you recover if you lose control or autopilot fails? I doubt it. But tell them to give me the coordinates and let's try this. Request new coordinates, ready to attempt to turn. Magnetic heading? 80 degrees. Okay, you ready? Uh-huh. Come on. Home plate, I have this a lot.
New course is 80 degrees. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're gonna land this beast. Very nice work. Everyone here is working hard to bring you home. Stand by. <laughs> He's heading back to California. A 347 break off and stay in trail formation. Oh, play. Do you require a visual of the cockpit? Negative 347. Stay in trail. Aircraft is still considered unstable. Roger, I read. Stay in trail. Nothing has changed. No, everything has changed. He made the turn. Without a hitch. All right, be ready to brief me in five minutes. Matt's here. It's Wayne Johnson. We have a situation. It's a Stratton. Let's fight some more. No, no, Sharon, I need you to stay here with me. Can you get it by yourself? Oh, yeah. It's in the galley on the left side. Uh, okay. Tough kid. Yeah. They're all tougher than you think. Do you have any? Me? Oh, no. <laughs> Haven't found the right guy. Or the time. <laughs> uh, there's never enough time for them. You just try to do the best you can, not screw them up in the process. You close with your boy? Yeah. 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 His, his mother died when uh, he was four, so it's just been us. And one day, you know, you wake up and... <laughs> yeah, and they've got minds of their own. Yeah. <laughs> you got that right. I, I just, uh, I gotta learn to back off a little. I'm sure you do just fine. Come on, talk to us, talk to us. Closer to the movie screen. My wife and I changed seats with them. All the planning for the future. Worrying when girls become homely. My whole life is right here. Look, um, we're on our way back to San Francisco, and there are people on the ground that are helping us. But we're gonna make it. So you should, you should come upstairs. How many planes do we have in the air? 18. Let's make sure they're all right. Listen, folks, if you're not directly involved in getting 52 back, please return to your desk. We need to keep this quiet until we have a clear plan of action, all right? Thank you. Oakland Center's on line six. I'll take that. Okay. This is Wayne Johnson. Mr. Johnson, this is Marlene Cobb, Oakland Center. What is the status of Pacific Global 52? We're in contact. There's a radio problem, and communication is currently limited to the data link. They're headed back. I'll call back with specifics once we have them. All right, sir. We'll continue monitoring and await your call. Thank you, sir. 
Would you give us a minute, please? We've got about an hour until the world starts breathing down our necks. I want these men thinking about that aircraft, not fielding calls from the press or being badgered by some outside agency. So, what's next? Can this guy bring it home? He's a weekend pilot, but with some luck, he's got a chance. He says he's got passengers alive, but in some sort of coma. Is that even possible? It's not only possible, it's unavoidable. Oxygen deprivation at 65,000 feet. They have no chance. Who are you? This is Ann Matz from Beneficial Insurance. Do you excuse us, please? Sure. This is what we're dealing with. This is Navy 347. Navy 347, go for home plate. Home plate, we have passengers and debris falling from the plane. Three four seven, keep your distance. Roger, home plate, falling back. I'm not leaving my wife. Instructions on landing. I'm gonna have to talk him down over a damn typewriter. How is it that this works and not the radio? That link runs off a satellite, not an exposed radio antenna. So no one else can monitor your communications? No. No, it dead ends on both sides. So many will die. We have a chance here. It'll get worse, not better. And it'll be left on your doorstep. Passenger manifest. Should we have BR contact relatives of the passengers, we can start booking them on flights to San Francisco. No, not just yet. I still owe Oakland Center a call, and uh, I want to make sure we're not missing anything before we go public. All right. in your mind there's a finite amount of water in the well what follow me on this you have an amateur pilot flying the most sophisticated aircraft in the world there are three scenarios here one your weekend pilot crashes into the ocean and everyone on board is killed 102 death payouts is a figure that i can calculate i'm sure you can ideal in actuarial tables and loss of life does, in fact, have a fixed price attached to it. Go on. Scenario number two, Mr. Barry slams that plane directly into the heart of downtown San Francisco. Thousands will be killed. And that doesn't concern you much? If he destroys ten city blocks, federal disaster relief will probably kick in. And you'd be off the hook. Oh, possibly. And outcome number three... If he successfully lands that plane, we are all in an unenviable position. The death payout is one thing, but that man is carrying a plane full of patients, likely requiring around-the-clock care for the rest of their diminished existence. Billions of dollars in lawsuits, victims' families, pain and suffering. The bills will be endless. Beneficial insurance will be bankrupt, and then the victims will go after your airline. You guys always figure out a way to pay. Not this time. The numbers are too big. Pacific Global will fold under the weight of the Stratton. There is no upside to landing that plane. There are people alive up there. Marginally. I still think he has a chance. 
fuels. Well, how could that be possible? We're supposed to be going all the way to Tokyo. The fuel load would have been calculated for the thin air at 60,000 feet. Down here, we're probably burning at three times that rate. I don't know if we have enough fuel to make it all the way back. What's gonna happen to them? Are they gonna... Are they gonna stay like that? I don't know, but... They're gonna need help as soon as possible. You could include others in the decision process, but that would take time. Do you think the board would vote on something like this? How many thousands of families will be ruined when Pacific Global folds? I mean, think of all the people on the ground whose lives will be destroyed by some insane gamble to try to land that plane. I mean, you can't even talk to the guy. He's over the Pacific heading towards a storm. And very soon, the decision will be out of your hands. Falcon Center on six. They want an update. This is Wayne Johnson. We've lost contact with Flight 52, initiating search and rescue. That happened. Pacific Global is reporting the loss of Flight 52. Search and rescue are en route. Ah, uh, we've lost containment. No, 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 no. The, the window is just tightening. All right, if they find this aircraft, that's just gonna be the beginning of a very lengthy and damaging investigation that the Navy does not need. The Nimitz is the closest carrier. The launch and search and rescue now. 75 minutes is the earliest intercept. We are ending this right now. Home plate, this is Navy 347. Confirm current mission. Navy 347, this is home plate. Confirm current mission. This aircraft is deemed derelict. Confirmed. Home oh, plate, this is 347 requesting permission to abort current mission. Negative 347. Proceed as ordered. Confirm. Proceed as ordered. Negative home plate. Navy 347 cannot follow that order at this time. 347, you are in violation of a direct order. Consider the consequences. Navy 347 has, sir. 347, that is a derelict ship. Do you understand? No, sir. It's a ship in distress. He knows he can't be court-martialed for refusing an order you have no authority giving. That boy isn't killing anybody else today, and neither are we. 347, this is Admiral Hennings. Report to the Nimitz. Current mission is aborted. Repeat. Current mission is aborted. Roger, home plate. Navy 347 en route to Nimitz. Admiral, this is my command. I will put more aircraft in the air. No, you won't. You're going to wait until Matos lands on the Nemitz to see if he keeps his mouth shut. There's no guarantee that the Stratton will even make it back to San Francisco. Our problems could just disappear into the ocean. Maybe. That's no longer your decision. Now you can tell whatever story suits you best. My report to the Pentagon will be as it happened. I need two copies of the data link printouts. One to be forwarded to air traffic control, the other for corporate. I'm assembling all the available senior West Coast executives. Well, I can monitor the data link while you brief corporate. No, 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 listen, I need you to make those copies while I try to make contact. If there's anyone left to make contact with. 
I, I just don't understand. There's no way the satellite failed, or we'd be hearing about it from our other aircraft. And if the data link was working before, then it should yeah, be... it should be, but it's not. Which is why I initiated search and rescue. Or would you feel better if we kept pinging away in there and let whatever survivors drown when we tried to work out the bug in our system? Right, right. KTC is waiting for those printouts. everyone busy? Keeping their minds on their work. And outside this room while you create a paper trail. Working on a solution. Now that was our last successful communication with 52. Then I scrambled search and rescue. It's all by the book. I'm assuming you have a plan. Yeah. What not to do in the cockpit of the world's most advanced plane. Have you ever flown through anything like this? My little Skymaster? <laughs> We'd be turning around looking for the nearest airport to set down in. No airport to turn back to here. Nope. We can't fly over it, and it could be hundreds of miles long. Well, what about if you left it on autopilot? If the turbulence is too great, it could disengage the autopilot. Then I'd have to take the controls. Well, I'll take that chance. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh... Let's see if they have any advice. Are you ready? I don't think anyone's ever ready for something like this. Have your turbulence expected as you pass through the storm. It's very important that you alter the center of gravity by transferring fuel between tanks. By what? Does that sound wrong? Well, if I knew where the tanks were... Yeah, still no luck. You look like you use a break. Thanks. But I need you out there making sure other planes are in the air. What's with the manual? There's gonna be a press conference later, and I just want to be on top of all the details. Listen, speaking of which, I need a report on everything that happened today. A roster of everyone on duty, step-by-step -step action taken by your staff, as well as your own thought process behind any and all actions taken. Now? Jack, you were the senior man on duty today. FAA and NTSB will want to know what you did and when you did it. Now, I'm already starting to compile my own timeline of events. I suggest you get to yours while it's still fresh in your mind. Timeline. Right. Would you like your job? What do you need me to do? Why can't you just go down on your own? In the center of the overhead CRT screen are four touchpads designated low pressure fuel valve position. We got him. Got it. Yeah. Switch them to the off position. Off? That's what it says. All of them? Let's just try one and see what happens. They want acknowledgement. Yeah, and I want to make sure that I don't screw this up. Locate covered switch, reading fuel valve emergency power. Okay, got it. Engage the switch. Engage the switch. This doesn't feel right. Will you confirm that? Just turn the damn thing.
they switched off the engines. I still can't stabilize this thing. It's our altitude. 11,000 feet. That's where the autopilot was cruising. Let's try it. Okay, come on. Oh. Back in the comforting hands of technology. Two, do you read? Acknowledge. San Francisco headquarters. What's your status? What's our status? We're still alive. No thanks to you. Shutting down the fuel lines. What am I, an idiot? They don't want us back. Why? I don't know. Maybe they don't think I can land this thing safely. Maybe somebody screwed up and they're just trying to cover the tracks. You know what? I don't really know why and I don't really care. All I know is we're on our own. Let them think we're gone. We don't have a lot of options. We're 45 minutes out from SFO, and the autopilot can get us close, but sooner or later, we're on our own. I mean, I could put her down in the bay, and we might make it up, but what about the rest of the passengers? I know the approach pretty well. I mean, not the technical end of it, but if it's clear, I can uh, probably get you to the airport. You can get us to the airport visually? Yeah. All right. We better do something about these passengers first. They've left. Good. Now give me the last coordinates and headings for Flight 52. Right. Let's go. Thanks. You'll be home soon, my love. Ladies, gentlemen, it's been a hell of a day. I'll fill you in on everything that's happened. Now, most of you are familiar with Ann Metz from Beneficial. She's already briefed me on our liability situation. It isn't pretty. 
The autopilot is going to get us to the outer marker, and then I'm going to have to take the controls. If I was a pro, I would fly right over San Francisco, out over Oakland, then circle back, and then come in and grab one of those runways by the bay. Oh, God, this is going to be hard. Pilots say SFO is one of the hardest to land at. I'm going to be flying over millions of people. I'm going to be fighting the bay's crosswinds. Ah, I don't think I can do it. Well, what if you try the straight-in approach? This plane needs a lot of stopping room. The runways at SFO are just barely long enough to accommodate it, even with an experienced pilot. If we overshoot, we're gonna go skidding right into the bay. And if you come in the correct way and go along, we run dead into the new bay center complex. All right, all right. You get us to the airport, and then we're gonna drop down towards the bay runway. Agreed? How will they know we're coming? We're gonna be showing up on their radar any minute now. They'll see us lumbering overhead. They'll figure it out. We've located Pacific Global 52. We're gonna head it off early and clear some airspace for you. Roger, Oakland. We'll take it from here. Here's that is your plane. Knew they were alive. This is air traffic control. Flight 52 is coming in. We need you to clear all the runways and scramble emergency crews. Thing, it's gonna be next to impossible to prove someone tried to kill us. Check this out. Now we have a record of every transmission sent and received since pre-flight. Are you kidding me? Let me see that flashlight for a second. Well, there's been no indication of a bomb. For all we know, it's possible that Flight 52 went down as a result of mechanical failure. Or potentially of design flaw, which would lay this squarely at the feet of the Stratton people. Yeah. Flight 52 is on approach. Flight 52 is on approach. You all know what to do. Okay? Yeah. Here goes. I see what you mean about the winds. No, I don't think that's a problem. What is it? There's a device called the yaw damper. It takes the roll out of the flight. When the autopilot's on, it's working. You must have to manually engage it when it's off. Was it on before? Maybe when we restarted the engines, it reset the system. Or maybe it shorted out. I, I'm not sure. Well, but what happens if we don't find it? The roll will just get worse and worse. The wings drop it from side to side. I can deal with that up here, but... When we get into the crosswinds for the landing, it's gonna get much worse. So when we land, we can hit the wing first? Let's find the yaw damper instead. I can't find anything marked as the yaw damper here. Maybe it's on one of these panels that never came back up. All right, well, even though they're not lit up, they may be doing something that's too risky to mess with it. Strap in, buckle up. We'll have to just go in without it. Approach. Yeah, but not bad for a weekend flyer. Found an outside marker and then flew in as the crow flies line toward us. Well, if that's the way they're coming in, we need to clear them some room. Guys, I think 10 is our best bet. Knock out the lights on all the other runways. Show them the way home. They saw us coming in and got runway 10 correct. 
Get him out of here. Are they going to be okay? Some better than others. We'll know more when we get them to a hospital. You okay? Yeah. Thank you. It's gonna be okay. Exactly what happened to the Stratton is still unclear, but its safe return is nothing short of a miracle. We got more planes to get home, people. He's an amateur pilot who survived a very dramatic experience. He's got no proof. No one will ever believe him. Is it the dad hike? A complete record. I bet we're gonna ruin somebody's night. <laughs> Big time. I'll be with you in a minute. Are you sure? Yeah. Hello. <sighs> well, 
are you ready to make some headlines? I guess. Come on then. Nice flight. What? I thought you said you'd call when you landed. You watching this? It's on every channel, Dad. Oh. You have no idea how glad I am to hear your voice. <laughs>